chat app. This video is sponsored by Cool Film. Sign up for a subscription and receive two mystery rolls of film in a box, 120 and 35mm films each month direct to your door, which occasionally all include other film related items such as stickers and processing offers. Cool Film also offer a loyalty program that lets everyone collect and spend points on most of their film stock and Cool Film merchandise on their website. And if you mention SFLAB or shoot film like a boss, Cool Film will give you a cool 10% of any of their products. And this is my box. Cool Film have sent me a surprise mystery box of film. I don't know if it's 120 or 35 mil. I've not got a clue what's inside there. Let's open it up and have a look. I'm quite excited to see what it is. Um, that's smart, there's a box inside a box. Let's get rid of that one. So I presume my box of film is inside here. Somewhere. There we go, the moment of truth. We've got, what's that? I've got the colour film. Okay, colour film. And a roll of HP5, one of my favourite films. In fact, I haven't got any 35mm uh, HP5 at the moment, so that's well handy. Um, Colour film, okay, so I've got some film I've never shot before. Most of you know on my channel, I don't shoot colour, it's all black and white, but um, I've got some Fuji Colour Print 136 exposure film. Um, I'm gonna go and shoot it as well. And I tell you what, the only person that I know is a relatively new YouTuber called Ribsy, doing film things is his channel. Check him out if you don't know him. And when I did a collaboration with photographer Paul C. Smith on his YouTube channel, uh, Ribsy put a comment in there saying, Great video again. I've been considering doing the same thing. Would love to print others' work in my darkroom. So what better chance to take him up on his offer? I'll save the HP5 for another day, but I'm gonna shoot this color film and that'll be something different for me. In film terms, I'm always, when I'm out shooting, looking for black and white stuff um, in my mind, you know, but this is gonna change the way that I think when I'm taking photographs. So I'm not gonna waste the opportunity to shoot the film. I'm gonna contact Ribsy, see what he says, and hopefully he'll agree to process this film for me and make a few prints. So I've loaded the film inside my Nikon F90X, nice reliable camera. I've put it on aperture priority mode and I've set the ISO to uh, 100. So this is, it's a 100 speed film. I'm gonna shoot it at 100. I've heard that with color um, overexposed by one stop, but because I haven't shot color before, uh, not in this sense anyway, um, I just thought I'd leave it simple, keep it at 100 and shoot the shit out of the film from there. So uh, I'm off down the farm, and what, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've viewed through a camera um, for fundamental purposes anyway. Colour, I'm usually looking for black and white, you know, so everything in my mind when I'm looking at scenes is black and white. So this time around, I'll be looking at colour. There's plenty of green, but that kind of gets a bit boring, so I'm going to go to the farm, and the guy's got, well, he's got some tractors and trucks and stuff, um, and they're colourful. We've got some yellow going on, some blues, uh, some reds, hopefully. So uh, we'll soon see when we get down to the farm what I can find and uh, see what I can get inside this colour film for Ribsy to develop and whack out a few prints for me. Start off with this green barn door. I've photographed this quite a few times in the past and it always seems to deteriorate even more, make a nice photograph. But this time I'm photographing it in colour. So uh, let's see what. See what this one looks like. Let's go and see the cows and see what they're up to. All right, who's up for a portrait, boys?
How long have you had it? 30 years. 30 years? All right, what's its top speed then? 13 miles an hour. 13 mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Has it cost you much in repairs to do up or? Sorry? Has it cost, does it cost you much in repairs to do up? Yeah, I've just spent about two grand on it. Have you? Yeah. Wow. I've been doing it up. How much are they worth? I wouldn't That's have a clue. About five, five and a half now. About five and a half grand, yeah? yeah. Oh, ho. smell that. So that's the result. I said I was looking for yellow, and uh, this bloke's got a tractor in the local farms, uh, whatever it is, and uh, it's red and yellow, so we'll get a few pictures of that. I've done 21 shots. Um, ribs, I've promised this guy a print of his tractor. So if you could send me a print, a nice decent print of his tractor, we'll cherish that forever. It's amazing, you come to a farm and you're never stuck for photographs. Um, shut up. <laughs> you're never stuck. You're never stuck for photographs, but you are gonna get a lot of noise. This here, I've got a blue background, I've got some yellow, I've got some red, some white. A little bit of a mixture going on and a bit of green there. Probably won't get that in the shot, but that's the sort of thing I'm looking for is bright colours. Just come around a stable area of the farm, and like I said, I've shot this, I've shot the shit out of this farm for years, all black and white. There's always something to, there's always something new you see to shoot down here. Um, but shooting in colour, I can go back and take all the same photographs that I've took in the past in black and white. So there's this little tiny window, this old distressed window here, you know. Okay, get a little bit closer. <sighs> Hmm. Right, I've only got, I feel like I've got one shot, maybe two shots left. So, oops, keep the tripod. So, I'll sacrifice those and uh, get this film over to Ribsy. See what he can do in the magic side of colour development and printing for me. And uh, hopefully, I've done him, myself, and Cool Film proud. Um, it's remarkable um, why I like watching Ribs' channel is he's just so basic, you know, the guy gets in his dark room, which is his bathroom, sits on the floor, he's got trays all over the place, does his prints, no fussing about, and comes out with some good stuff. So, no, it's not all about the equipment you use or how big your dark room is, you know, you know, you know I'm in a shed, for God's sake, and I'm doing the best that I can. And, uh, if you love shooting film, then you just get on with what you've got, what you know, and enjoy yourself. I'm getting wet. I'm gonna go in for a cup of tea, a cheese and piccadilly sandwich. Yeah, no, I'm good, mate. I'm good. How did you get on with the film I sent you? Did they come out all right? I think so, man. I really like what I'm seeing. Um, just even looking at the negatives alone before doing anything like scanning or printing, I was really interested in what you had. So definitely had a good time printing as well. What did they come out like the next? Because obviously like, this is the first time for me to shoot and then send my stuff away to be done. So it's, it's a bit yeah, weird. Yeah. No, your, your exposures look totally fine. Whatever metering you were doing that, I think that's probably the most obvious thing. It, it looks good. And then, um, yeah, the, the film's crisp. It's fresh. So there, there shouldn't be any problems there. 
Oh, awesome. It was just on um, Aperture Priority. I just kept it simple, kept it 100. Um, I went around the farm that you saw um, yeah. that I was shooting on the legs. And uh, the, the guy with a tractor, he, I was quite lucky. He, ca he came yeah, out yeah. and um, I've, I've never seen him down the farm before. And he said, do you want me to get the tractor out? We spent quite a bit of time getting loads of crap out of the way just so he could get his <laughs> tractor out for a shot. And uh, he said to me on the, on, on the way out, he said, well, I'll get to see a photograph. I was like, he's filmed, mate. I said, I've got to send it to Brixton. <laughs> There we go. No, I tell him I got him. I got a couple really nice ones from him. I'll let him know if, if I do see him. So, um, what was your? So, let's have a look at some of the scans, ribs. Oh, wow. <laughs> so these right here, I, I picked these four for a specific reason. Um, I think all of these have amazing texture, and I think Fuji Industrial, for some reason, I feel like it really lends itself to this kind of scene where there's, you know, it's not just something that's very beautiful or clean cut. It's kind of rough. It's got a little bit of texture. It's a bit rugged and. Uh, I think these images, you capture all that really, really nicely. Plus, there's some amazing colors in some of these. Um, that photo in the middle, the one that has that blue kind of trash bin and then a little um, yes. like uh, hitch of some sort, I love that. I just think the green and the blue just looks awesome. And then the photo on the left, that green beaten up door with the brick yeah. around it, I mean, that is the most artsy thing I've ever seen. Like, you, you got a good eye there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make the door. It was just sitting there. I'm, you know, I've been around that farm so many times because it's, um, you know, and I've always shot black and white around the farm. And luckily the farmer just lets me go in and do, you know, he gives me carte blanche. He says, do what you want. And there's always something interesting there to photograph. But you're always looking um, uh, in black and white. So when I had to go back and, and shoot this colour industrial, this Fuji industrial film, um, it was strange because all of a sudden I had to try and think of colours. So I was trying to think of rich colours like blues and reds and, and, that, and that door, I'd shot that so many times before and I nearly never, I nearly never took a photograph of it because I just thought, I've done this so many... But then I, I, then I thought to myself, no, I'm shooting colour. Get the colour out. No, you make a good point. I, I barely shoot black and white. And from what I hear and also from what I've experienced here and there, it's just a whole different process. You really have to think a different way and kind of look for different things. So... Kudos to you, man. You, you did it pretty good for switching to color for the first, like, couple times. Thanks, man. What about the tractor? How did that come out? The, um, I, I took some pictures of that guy's tractor. Were they okay? Yeah, yeah. The tractors look great. In fact, that's actually one of the images that I printed. So you want me to show you that one? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's have a look. I'll be interested to see it. So here's the first one. Wow. That's come out really well. I can see there's, there's lots of detail in the background. That surprises me. Oh, yeah, man. No, your exposure was great. And I think for this particular image, you know, when you, when you kind of shoot into an enclosed space, the, the part in the front comes out beautifully kind of soft lit. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have that here. And then, of course, there's some light penetrating into the back of the image. So I think this is great. And color-wise, I mean, you picked the most bright thing you could find, which I think was a great choice. And I just love this composition. You know, it's a tractor. It's an antique. This is classic film photography right here. All, all the nerds will get really excited about this. <laughs> he said He said that when he pulled the canopy back and he was, I saw him with this track, I just looked at the red and yellow. I thought, well, this is perfect. This, this is, I wanted to get some yellows in the photographs, but that tractor was just red and yellow. I thought that's going to work no, um, you for you. Me. Well, this was, this was one of my favorite shots for sure, especially of the tractor. I love and, and I printed that's one amazing. more shot for you. And I know you photographed cows oh. in the past and you've risked your life. <laughs> I've trodden a lot of cow shit. I don't know about risk me life. <laughs> so here, let me show you the next one here. I really love this one as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This moody shot of, of one of the cows. You had a bunch of cow shots, but this one, I think, I don't know, it kind of spoke to me, given that there was a lot of shadow, a lot of dark around the cow itself. Right. And of course, the cow is directly in the middle. It's just, I don't know, I really like how you wow. kind of captured this cow, like, off to the side there. Yeah. That's really interesting to see, you know, we both, you do a lot of colour, I do a lot of black and white, I do my own printing, you do your own printing. And uh, it's interesting to see you printing my stuff, but in colour. It's, um, <laughs> it's really strange. I'll have to get myself into colour at some point. What, what sort of chemicals did you use, Ribs? So for, for colour printing, you typically use RA4 chemicals, and those are pretty standard. I think when they were created, it was meant so that you could take any photographic colour paper and any um, colour negative film and just print with these chemicals and that's all you need and they're they're pretty cheap um the only problem is they they exhaust so um it's not or at least the way that i print i use tanks that you put the film you put the the print inside of it light right. tight and then yeah. it has a little hole on top and you pour the chemicals in is that space saving exactly and, and in that process though every shot of chemical that you pour in there at least for the developer part exhausts 
immediately. So you can't reuse it. Uh, fortunately, though, the Blix, that is reusable. So you can use the same Blix over and over again during a session. And it doesn't take a lot. But but yeah, it's a bit wasteful just because every single trial of print that you do, the chemical shop, the developers, you need you need more developer for the next one and so on and so forth. So it gets, it gets more expensive than black and white, I'll, I'll take it. I, I think so. I've only printed black and white in the dark room, so I've never paid for like, the chemicals myself. But I, I, I feel like you, you definitely get a lot more out of your black and white chems. Okay. Well, listen, mate. If you um, if you want to, if you want to, I'll return the favor. If you send me a black and white film, I'll um, I'll put I'll put it through and go to darkroom with it. Yeah, man. I, I'm actually looking to dedicate a whole month to black and white just to challenge myself. So when I get that done, I'll definitely be hitting you up to see what magic you can work for me. All right, Ribs. Listen, mate. I thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to getting those prints in the post, especially one that I can give to the tractor man. He'll love it. Yeah, for sure, man. No problem. Nice chatting. I'll catch you later, Ribs. Thanks a lot, buddy. So it's a couple of days after since me and Ribsy did that video chat, and I must admit I was blown away by the scans that come back. I, I can't remember the last time I put a, a roll of colour film into a camera and took photographs. It was some years back, and. Um, it's actually made me think to myself, I fancy shooting some colour now for a change. So maybe you might start seeing that on my channel. Let us know in the comments what you think. And also, if you shoot colour yourself, let me know what I should start with. I know there's a techno kit that I can go out and buy. Um, should I buy that or should I buy something else? Let us know in the comments. So I've got to say thanks very much to Ribsy for processing the film and making the print. I'm looking forward to those negs and the prints coming back to me, especially so I can give one to the tractor guy. And I've also got to give a mention and say thank you for Cool Film for sending me those uh, two rolls of film. And what Cool Film are doing, I think is great. You know, good on them. They're keeping film alive, they're keeping it exciting and they're keeping it fun. I've still got a roll of HP5 to shoot, shot the colour one, and I'm now left with an empty box. Don't know what I'll do with that. But uh, well done, Cool Film, for keeping film alive. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Check out the description for the links for Ribsy's channel and also Cool Film. Don't forget they'll give you 10% of any of their stuff on their website. And I'll catch you next time.